Sorry, Ford. Not gonna do it. So I saw an interesting video the other night by a Ford Tech Makey Loco, I believe is his name. And he was doing a, a video on the difference between a vehicle that had been taken care of as far as far as oil changes and one that had been neglected. He had two F-150s, almost the same mileage, 150 or so. And one was all one was all varnished inside and the other one was all nice and clean. And um, he was just stressing the importance of oil changes. And one of them had um, jump time because of the poor oil maintenance. Um, these have, these th five four liters with the three valve have cam phasers and um, chain tensioners which run off of oil pressure. So obviously um, it doesn't matter what kind of oil you use, if it's not clean and if it's not full, a system that runs off oil pressure is not going to work. So um, anyway, he made an offhanded comment about you could go ahead and start using 5W30 in these motors. And that got me thinking, well that's weird, why would he say that? So I looked into it a little more and I've, I've done a lot of reading on BobIsTheOilGuy.com in the past. And um, I read some other forms specifically for the 5.4 liter Triton. And um, it looks like a lot of guys have started running 5W30 in these. Because um, the first symptom you're going to get is um, just a little tick. It almost sounds like lifter tick right away. And then it will progressively just get louder and remains constant. I heard it in mine the other day. This is a 2013 Expedition. has just under 90,000 miles on it. I heard it in mine just the other day for the first time. Started up in the morning and it did, did a little tick, 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 tick right away and it, it went away. And so I'm going to try and hopefully prevent further issues down the road. And um, it looks like the reason that Ford went to a 5W20 is to satisfy um, cafe recommendations and just pretty much government overreach garbage. Trying to satisfy laws and the EPA and all that fun jazz. So, um, hopefully, this will uh, prevent further issues. So the thought process behind switching to a 30 weight oil is that the 30 weight oil is going to provide better lubricity and it's just going to hold up better under heat and pressure than a 20 weight. It does have better lubrication properties, however, being a little bit thicker, it reduces fuel mileage which is why um, they recommend 520 because that's what the cafe standards say and on and on and on. So yeah, you can read it for yourself. There's it's a huge debate about which is better, this or that, or do you really need to do this or not? And I don't know. I, it kind of swayed me that maybe I should be running 530 and hopefully trying to prevent some damage. Um, I really don't care if I lose a little bit of mileage if this protects uh, my engine. Um, so far all I've heard is the occasional tick when I first started up and um, it has a rough idle every now and then and those are two of the beginning symptoms it seems from what I've read. So we're going to run 5W30 for now and uh, see if that um, wards off any future issues. Now I do really like Mobile One Full Synthetic and it's really not expensive if you buy it at Walmart. Walmart sells it for full price $25.88. I bought it today on sale for $22.88 and um, everywhere else has it for like 35 bucks. So Walmart, if you're gonna run Mobile One, Walmart is by far the cheapest place you're gonna find this stuff. And I just started running this um, high mileage today because it does have over 90,000 miles on it. Or I mean almost 90,000, so we'll see if, I don't know if that makes a difference or if it's just snake oil, I don't really know. But I am pretty sold on Mobile One, use it for quite a few years and I really like it. So anyway, if you guys have anything to add to this, please comment, let me know below and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.